What Ho Adventures, Ancient Grim here, back again with an update to my previous tutorial. Make a campaign starting screen that rocks. Let's get to it. All right, so here I am. I'm going to create a world. Doesn't matter what the world is. I'm just going to call it Test World. Welcome to Test World. I'm just going to pick, it doesn't really matter. None of this matters. Create a world. I'm going to launch the world. I'm going to sign into the world. All this stuff you already know how to do. Unpause it, hit space. All right, now let's set up. So some things that we're going to need to do this. Let's do our modules first. And let's turn off this monitoring echo that I have in my ears because this is really lame. There we go. Now I, now I don't hear myself, so I'm not going to speech jam myself. All right, so we are going to want FX Master and Lib Wrapper. Actually, you know what? Let's not do those. We'll just do the ones that we're going to use right now. Lock View, Monk's Active Tile Triggers and PDF Foundry. So this is gonna get rid of using Trigger Happy because that sort of makes it a mess. Although, what I'm gonna show you how to do, um, actually what I'm gonna, so we got our modules open. Let's check out, we wanna use Lock View and Monk's Active Triggers and save the module settings. Now let's go into our configure settings, go over to module settings, hit user configuration, and we are going to check off all of this. That's essentially just giving the module the control over everything. Uh, Monk's active triggers, tile triggers. We are going to want to use the core macro execute. Yes, save the changes, okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to need a user and a player in order to test this. So let's create a user first. So settings, user management, create additional user. Player one. I'm not going to give him a password or anything. You do it. You do you kids. Save and return. I'm going to log back in as the game master. I'm going to come over to my actors area here. I'm going to create a folder. This is just how I do it. You do it however you do, how to, how you uh, categorize things. Players. And create a folder. Now I'm going to create a player. And uh, this is Flurg. I'm going to name him. Same as I did in the last video. All right. Let's get rid of him. Let's give... Let's configure the permissions on him. So what I did there is I right, I right click on this over here. Sorry, right click on this, go to configure permissions. Player one, I'm gonna make him the owner of Flurg. Okay. Now, I also, we are going to want a journal that is named with the same name as our player's character. That will allow us to automate opening it much easier with just one line, one, uh, line of code for a macro. So we're gonna go over to our journals. We're going to create a folder called Player Journals. Again, you don't have to follow this. This is just how I'm doing it. But what you do need to create is a journal entry called Flurg. Has to be the same name as the character. And there we go. All right. And then we can click Permissions, and we can make Player 1 the owner of that as well. <clears throat> Okay, so next we are going to go over to scenes and we're going to create a scene and we're going to call this, uh, I'll just call it start or we'll call it splash, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter what the name is. All right, now in here we're going to do show and navigation. Sure, we'll leave that there just for now. Uh, we'll pick, pick a background for it. So I'll go in here and find the background I want to use, which we'll use this. So I did try something where I wasn't using the uh, 
the pre-made background items here, but I'm going to use it in this one just because it'll be easier. So create a background, create the background in Photoshop or, or GIMP or whatever photo editing tool you are creating that you want for your characters, for that you want your players to see when they log in. So I'm going to pick this, hit select. I'm going to the initial view position. I'm going to click this. Background color, I'm going to change to black. Change it to whatever color you want. And if you're playing Morkborg, you want to blind everybody and make that, that bright yellow. Then I'm going to go to my grid. Ooh, I am going to pull the opacity down to zero. I'm going to go to lighting. I'm going to uncheck token vision, uncheck fog, fog of exploration. Ambience, we could create a playlist if we wanted to. The important thing here is lock view. So we are going to lock the pan. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's save this. Let's, re let's reposition ourselves. You do that by holding down right click and dragging, which I'm sure you already know. I'm going to set this up a little bit because the player screen is going to be pushed down a little bit because they're in a browser. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here, right click on splash, go to configure, go to lock view. I'm going to lock the pan, lock the zoom, set the bounding box. I'm going to auto scale to outside. I'm going to force the initial view and I'm going to hit save. All right, now that's step one complete. Sorry if I'm going a little fast, but I'm trying to make this video not take forever. All right, so now let's go log into Oh, let's uh let's not go here. Okay. So, I'm going to log in in my browser with my network IP address. And I'm going to log in as player 1. I'm going to hit join the game session. I'm going to select my character and hit save configuration. And as you can see now, the player can see the screen. He can't, I can't move it. I can't, I can't scroll. I'm trying to zoom. Not, nothing. It, I am stuck here. All right. So now let's uh, go back to our, our DM area. All right. So now we're back in here. So. What we want to do now is we're gonna we're gonna mess with active token, and this is in the last video I was using trigger happy because when I originally created the video, like I don't know, almost a year ago, um, that was the best way to do this, and I did not realize I didn't even actually look. Shame on me um, to see if there was a better way to do it now, and it seems to be that there is. Um, active tokens will do it, which is why we installed Monk's active tokens. So what we're going to want to do, and what I'm going to do is we're going to create, first we're going to create it so that you can just click on these things and have them have them do stuff. So let's create a token. I'm going to come over here to the tokens, or excuse me, tiles. Active tiles, not token, active tiles. I'm going to come over here to the tiles. I'm going to create a tile over the character. And you can see over here, triggers. I'm gonna set it to active. All tokens can do this. Anybody that controls anything can do this. And on enter, we want on click. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna add a when the person clicks it, what does it do? So we need a macro. So let's go down to our macros here before we save anything. We've got this all set up and ready to go. You know what? Let me. I'll just create the tile. Let's create our macro for opening the character. All right. So we're going to click here. Open character. Wow. Open character sheet. I'm going to change this to script and I'm going to paste this in here. And this command is game.actors 
dot get name parentheses character dot name end parentheses dot sheet dot render open parentheses true close parentheses semicolon and we're going to save that macro now we're going to come back over here i'm going to reposition this because i've got a little ocd there we go now i'm going to double click on this over here i'm going to go back to my trigger and I'm, now we're going to add our trigger so we're going to hit add We're going to go down and find run macro, run as triggering player, hit update, update the tile. So now let's test it. I'm going to bring you back over to the window of the player. And there you go. It opens, it opens his sheet. Great. Awesome. Now let's do the same thing again. With the journal, we're going to create a new tile. Over the journal. It is also going to be anyone. It's going to be on click. Create that. I just need to move it around because I want them to sort of click on the word. All right. We're going to create another macro. This one is open player journal. Change it to script. Paste this in game.journal.getName parentheses character.name parentheses dot sheet dot render parentheses true and parentheses semicolon. Save that macro. I'll go back over here to journal. I will double click that. Go to triggers. I will add my action, which will be to run a macro. It will be open player journal and run as run as the triggered player. OK, update. Now let's go back over here again. Oh, something didn't work. Oh, I forgot to check it as active update so let's go back over here to our player and there we go now we have our journal there we go beautiful now the thing that i don't like as you saw in well, as you see here i hate this i hate that the character and, and now we have these gray boxes over it so there's a couple things you can do if you don't care if you see it, but you don't want your players to see it, you can right, you can right, excuse me, you can right click on it, select it, right click it, and, and hide it. Select it, right click it, and hide it. And now we'll go back over to our player window, and they still work, but now it's not this giant blob on the screen. The other thing you can do, like I said, you can hide them, or you could go in basic and give it an image path to a transparent image or a PNG that is just empty in a transparent background. For instance, let me unhide these. So as you can see, now they're back. If I go in here and I find my transparent background right here, and I select it and I update it, now it's it's clear, but you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the other way that I had it just because I'm going to get rid of my image, update it, and I'm just going to say that they're hidden. So now, you want some feedback so that the player knows that it's clickable, right? I mean, sort of meh right here right who cares like I, I i can click it but i have no i have no visual indication that i can click it so in one of my previous comments somebody had mentioned that that i i'm trying to get rid of the this ugly thing that's going on here on my player screen i don't want them to see that and actually if i was streaming my game i wouldn't want them to see it either and i would use the transparent png um which actually you know what 
I'm going to do that. I am going to do that because I hate seeing these things. Okay, so the next cool thing that we can do is we can create a couple more. Now, this is this might get a little hairy, uh, but what we can do is we can draw another one, right? So let's, we're going to make another one that's about the size that we need. Another tile. And in here, we're going to set it to active. And we are going to say on hover in. Actually, so let's let's do this in the right order, right? Okay, let's, right the, let's do it in the correct order. Escape. Let's do this. I need a file. Now, I created a little squiggly, right? So you, you can go find this anywhere. And I'm going to put the squiggly underneath character. And I'm going to position it better. There we go. Okay, I'm going to set that to be invisible to start. Now I'm going to take a tile and I'm going to make it however big you need it to be to fit over the word character, same as we did here. And I am going to go to triggers, active, hover in. Add my trigger. I am going to show hide. Now I'm going to click this little this little grabby doodad, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click that, and that gives it it it'll selects the entity that we want to show or hide, and I'm going to hit show. Okay. Create that tile. I'm going to set it to not visible. I'm going to drag it over here. Now I am also going to create another tile about the same size. Actually, this one I'll make a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to triggers. I'm going to make it active. Uh, it is going to be on hover out. And my action will be Show or hide. I'll take that, pick in the little squiggle again, and it will be hide. Update, create. Now I'll drag this. Whoops. I will drag, eventually, I will drag this over here. And there we go. Now I'm going to right click that and I'm going to hide that. Now our player won't see anything on the front. However, when they hover over this, whatever the little decal is that you've picked out, hide the decal, will show up and it'll click. So awesome. That's cool. But let's go a step farther. Let's get a, a little bit more code. And this code's a little bit too long. For, I'm not going to read this out for you guys. But I'm going to go into my... Actually, you know what? I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm going to do this. Script I'm going to create. This is going to be open documents sound. And I'm going to paste this in here. So I can't scroll in on this. I will make sure that all this stuff is available for you guys to copy and paste. Um, obviously, you're going to want to put your sound. And then in here, you're going to have to write the path to it. So mine is under assets underneath my data um, directory for where Foundry is installed. Or, even easier, let's do that. Let's do that. So, 
let's move our this is our uh, hide this is our show and this is our click okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here I'm going we're gonna make it so that when I click on this um, to open it up a sound plays so let's do that let's click that we'll go to triggers this is running the macro, and as soon as we run the macro, we will play a sound, play a sound file. I'll get my sound file. Uh, uh, volume, sure, it's not going to loop. Restrict to scene. Uh, up, restrict to scene. It is for triggering player only. Update. Update. Of course, it didn't do it. Oh, because it didn't save it. I, why does it keep doing that? Oh, my God. Play a sound file. Flip. Update. Update. There we go. All right, so now I will put this back on here. I will bring our window over here. There it is. And now we have a sound effect of it opening. We could also do on the on the hover in. We could we could make it do a little click sound or something like that. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the journal, right? The only problem is, is this seems to happen on everybody's screen. Or at least it's happening on mine and the players. Aha! So that's why. So when I hover over it, it shows up on the player's screen. So let's do this. Player only. Player only. Put this over here. All right, so now if we come over to the player's view, we now have our little underlines and we can open up our stuff and we have our sound effect it's all good and nice there you have it uh that's the first episode to what i hope will be a at least a few episode series next time i'll show you how to do the pdfs and and we'll once again re-go over adding this and if if i can find a cooler way to do the uh the hover effect then we'll do it um, maybe some more sound effects and all that stuff to make the UI really come to life a little bit more. Um, in the meantime, if there's anything you can think of that you would like to see or that you want to attempt to try, uh, by all means, comment it down below. Or if you have a better way of doing something that's quicker and easier than what I'm showing, man, I would love to hear it because I'm all about quick and easy but cool. In any case, thanks for watching. Please do all the YouTube stuff, you know, comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff notifications blah 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 you know the laundry list and i will see you next time until then stay grim <laughs> <laughs>